Have you started writing your related literature? Do you find it difficult to start writing? Do you want to come up with a coherent review of literature? Or do you even know how to synthesize information from the literature you have gathered? Don't worry, because this is what we are going to learn today. Welcome to Senior High School Academy's ABCs of Quality Research. This is the Ed School Radio's Senior, Senior High, High School, School on Air Academy. And now, here's your new episode for ABCs of Quality Research. Research. Your guide for the subject, Practical Research 1, ABCs of Quality Research. Hello, Grade 11 learners. We are on the sixth episode of our subject, and I'm so grateful to be with you today. Enjoy listening to DWDY 1107kHz and to our FB page at Radio Escuela sa Isabela. At last, this beautiful day has arrived. I'm sure you have all been eagerly waiting for another fun-filled learning experience. I'm your radio teacher, Teacher Terence, and I'll be with you today until the end of this episode. Before we start, make sure to grab your ball pen, notebook, modules, or activity sheets. Be on your comfortable seat and check if you have a clear broadcast signal so we can have a smooth flow of our discussion. Let us see if you read your materials at home. Are you ready? Before we proceed to our new lesson, let us try to recall some of the highlights from your previous discussion. Are you ready? Yes, sir. That's good. Now, let's start answering these questions. What are the four major sources that you can review for your study? That's right. We have documents, numerical records, oral statements, and relics. All right. Next question. Can you give me some tips on selecting relevant literature? Indeed! First is having a clear understanding of the research question. Second, planning your manner on obtaining data. Third is doing the literature search. And lastly, keeping reference information. Here's the next question. What are the two major styles of citation? That's good! We have integral and non-integral citation. Last question. What are the four patterns of citation? Precisely, we have summary, paraphrase, direct citation, and tense of verbs for reporting. Wow! I am really amazed with your performance. Wow! Your responses are indications that you understood your past lesson and that you are now ready for the new learning. Great job, kids! At this moment, let us check your answers from the previous quiz. Are you ready? Okay, that's great. So here is number one. The answer is false. Number two, we have false. It's tire model. Number three, the correct answer is true. Next, number four, true is the answer. And the last number, the correct answer is true. Did you get a perfect score? Yes, sir! Wow! That's amazing! For those who got a score lower than 5, it's okay. Just do better next time. Okay? Alright! Since we've finished checking your quiz, let us start our discussion. Please listen carefully and jot down the things that we will be discussing. In our previous episode, you have learned about the importance of the review of the related literature. You might have started researching for different related literature that you can use as references in supporting the statements you mentioned in your paper. Actually, there are numerous literature available not only in books, 
but also on the internet. Through the use of technology, researching literature has been made fast and easy. However, your review of related literature does not include researching literature. One of the most needed in this chapter is synthesizing information from the relevant literature you have researched. As what I have said earlier, this is what we are going to learn today. Then, at the end of the lesson, you are expected to write a coherent review of literature. Alright! But here's a question. Do you know how to synthesize? Hmm. Let's know first what is synthesis. Synthesis means combining separate elements into a whole. It is a way to make connections among and between numerous and varied source materials. You have to bear in mind that a review of literature is grouped by topic to create a whole view of the literature relevant to your research question. Let us take cyberbullying as your research topic. Now, you have to search, gather, and read related literature about cyberbullying. After, you need to combine all your gathered review of literature to create a picture of what your research topic would be about. As you complete your reading, you'll come across a number of ideas presented by different authors. You are expected to critically evaluate this information, identify theme and gaps, then synthesize what you have learned to provide your reader with a better understanding of the literature related to your topic. You, as the researcher, has to bring together the materials from the different sources and make them as an integrated whole. You might be asking now, how do I synthesize information that they have gathered from relevant literature? Hmm. Don't you worry because I got you covered with four steps in synthesizing your information. Alright! Number one, organize your sources. Number two, outline your structure. Number three, write paragraphs with topic sentences. And number four, revise, edit, and proofread. Are you set now to know these things, my dear learners? Yes, sir! What are you waiting for? Let's go! The first step is organizing your sources. Before you can jump off the writing, you have to organize your information in a way that allows you to see and create relationships between your sources. Organizing your sources can help you analyze deeper the descriptions, the strengths, and limitations of the literature you have gathered. Second, outlining your structure. After organizing your sources, you should have a clear overview of the main connections and differences between the sources you have read. This time, you need to decide how you group them together and the order in which you'll discuss them. There are a few different approaches you can take to help you structure your synthesis. It can be chronologically, if your sources cover a broad time period, and you found patterns in how researchers approach the topic over time. It can also be thematically if the literature covers various different subtopics. If you are drawing on literature from various different fields or they use a wide variety of research methods, you can organize your sources methodologically. And lastly, if your topic involves a debate between different schools of thoughts, you can organize it theoretically. Third, third is writing paragraphs with topic sentences. 
what sets a synthesis apart from a summary is that it combines various sources. The easiest way to think about this is that each paragraph should discuss a few different sources and you should be able to condense the overall point of the paragraph into one sentence. This is called a topic sentence and it usually appears at the start of the paragraph. The topic sentence signals what the whole paragraph is about and every sentence in the paragraph should be clearly related to it. And lastly, revise, edit, and proofread. Like any other piece of academic writing, synthesizing literature doesn't happen all in one go. It involves redrafting, revising, editing, and proofreading your work. Were you able to get all of those four steps? Yes, sir! Let's repeat the four steps in synthesizing your information. First is, organize your sources. Second, outline your structure. Third, write paragraphs with topic sentences. And fourth, revise, edit, and proofread. I know you might find writing this quite difficult, but I assure you that once you start writing, you'll find yourself rewriting until you come up with your final review of related literature. This time, I will give you checklists in writing your synthesis you may ask yourself to have a more coherent synthesis. What I need you to do is to listen and jot down these things that we will be discussing. Are you ready? Yes, sir! That's awesome! Number 1 Did I introduce the paragraph with a clear, focus topic sentence? Remember that a clear, focus topic sentence will help your reader get along and understand your point. Number 2 Did I mention only the most relevant findings? Mentioning all your relevant findings will strengthen your points and arguments. Number three, is the paragraph organized around a single idea? Bear in mind that in synthesizing, you need to relate all your different literature into a single whole. Wandering away from the single idea may create confusion on the part of your readers. Number four, is the paragraph directly relevant to a research question or topic? And number five, is there a logical transition from this paragraph to the next one? These transitions will help your readers to see the connection or relationship between ideas and also prevent sudden mental leaps between sentences and paragraphs. Let's listen to them once again. The checklist of writing a more coherent synthesis are first, Clear, focus, topic sentence for introduction. Number two, mentioning of the most relevant findings. Number three, paragraph organized around a single idea. Number four, directly relevant paragraphs to research, question, or topic. And number five, logical transitions from a paragraph to another review or any other paper you should make sure to check on this list. So, that's our wrap for today. We learned that synthesizing means combining research literature into one. We also enumerated the steps in synthesizing information, which are organizing your sources, outlining your structure, writing paragraphs with topic sentence, then revising, editing, and proofreading. All right! There you have it. I guess you are now ready for your activity. Write your answers in your activity or quiz notebook. Are you ready? That's great. So, here it is. Based on your desired title, research and read for at least five related literatures and studies. 
then write the synthesis of the articles you have read either from books, journals, researches, or internet sources. Also, don't forget to cite your references using APA format. This will be your rubric. 10 points for synthesis or analysis, 5 points for thesis or topic sentence, 5 for organization and use of transitional markers, and 5 for grammar and mechanics. A total of 25 points. I repeat, based on your desired title, research and read for at least 5 related literatures and studies. Then, Write a synthesis of the articles you have read either from books, journals, researches, or internet sources. Also, do not forget to cite your references using APA format. This will be your rubric. 10 points for synthesis or analysis, 5 points for a thesis or topic sentence, 5 for organization and use of transitional markers, and 5 for grammar and mechanics. A total of 25 points. Did you get it? That's it. I'll be giving you time to finish your work. And don't forget to submit your output to your teacher in Practical Research 1. Would that be okay? Hmm, that's great! For now, we have to end our jam-packed discussion here because our airtime is now on the tip of the clock. Once again, I have been your teacher for this episode. On behalf of the scriptwriter of this lesson, teacher Patricia Ann Iramel, and the whole SDO Isabella RBI production team, I am teacher Terence, leaving you with a dose of positivity and reminding you that better days are coming. Thank you for listening with me. Until next time, goodbye!